So, so we only have a few problems left over. There was only like a few, two problems or so that we didn't finish, but I, I kind of want to go over today a review of what we talked about yesterday. So what, what are we doing today? We're doing two things, right? First thing we're doing is find the limit of functions as they approach infinity, right? All of our questions has as X approaches infinity or negative infinity. So as the function's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, what the heck is Y doing, right? What the heck is Y doing? As the function is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, where the heck is y? That's the first thing we're doing, right? The second thing we're doing is finding horizontal asymptotes. The nice thing is, they're the same thing. Okay, so if you do one, you're going to do the other. Okay. Um, so there's three situations we end up with. Top-heavy situation, where the degree, the biggest exponent on top, is bigger than the bottom. If that's the case, our limit is either going to be at positive infinity or negative infinity, and there will be no horizontal asymptote. And then I gave you an example. The opposite is bottom heavy, where the degree on the, in the denominator is larger. Limit's always zero. Y, uh, the asymptote is y equals zero. There is a as horizontal asymptote, and it's always at y equals zero. So that one's just zero, zero. Okay, if that, that one's for bottom heavy. Equally distributed, we have to make a fraction. Coefficient of the, the leading coefficient for the degrees. Since the top had a, the degree was two and the bottom was two as well, those are the guys we look at. So negative one over five. And it's the same spot as the asymptote, right? Okay, so everything we've looked at fall into one of those two categories, okay? Did I give you this example? Let me see. Let me give you this example. You don't have to write this down, but what about this guy? I think I might have, but just, in, just to be sure. Let's say we have x to the third plus 4. Which one of would that fall into? Bottom heavy, top heavy, or equally distributed? Top heavy. Top heavy, yeah, why top heavy? Because it's going to be over 1. Yeah. There is no fraction, it's always over one. Yeah, I think I told you guys that yesterday, but just in case, right? That's the biggest thing. Oh, this one doesn't have a fraction, what do I do? Well, it does have a fraction, always. All, everything has fraction, we can create into a fraction. All right, okay, so we did the example two B, or sorry, C, example two C. Okay. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So we're going this way. So as x gets all the way over, as far as it can possibly go, and then some, what the heck is y doing? Okay. All right, so the degree on top. What is the degree on top? Four, right? x to the fourth. What is the degree on the bottom? One, right? So it's going to be top heavy, right? Mm -hmm. So we go back to our table, and we see what top-heavy looks like. There's no asymptote. There is no horizontal asymptote. That's the first thing. But yeah, so our, and our limit's going to either be plus or minus infinity, one of the one of the others. Okay, so let's see. So let's write that down. Horizontal asymptote, horizontal asymptote at, oh, there is none, right? Yeah. We say none, yeah. So we say no horizontal asymptote. And then our limit is either going to be positive infinity or negative infinity. This is where we got to kind of do a, some mental math. So yeah, on top, again, we aren't worried about anything other than the degrees, the guys with the degrees, right? That's all we are worried about, okay? So on top, if I plug in a very, 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 very large negative, negative, the biggest number you can think of, it's going to come out as positive on top, right? Positive on top because you're taking it to the fourth power. Anything to the fourth power is always going to be positive. The bottom is going to stay negative, right? 
because x to the first is negative, would be negative, times three is still negative. So this would be negative, so the limit would be negative infinity. So when you do these things, these guys, um, you're looking for odd or even powers, right? Odd powers might be negative. Even powers will always be positive. All right, so now let's look at this guy. Okay, so this is one of the ones we ran into, right? Is it top heavy, bottom heavy, or equally distributed? Top heavy. Yeah, very top heavy, right? Because there's a one down there. Okay, so it's top heavy, just like the one we just saw, right? So we have to decide if it's going to be positive infinity or negative infinity. So again, we have to do some mental work, some mental work. So E, E is an exponential, right? So if I were to plug in a very, very, very large negative, and then I was to actually plug it in here. Over here, right, what would I get over here? A positive, right? So you get a positive over here. So let's stop for a second on this guy. That number wouldn't exist, would it? Say again. Would that number exist because can't have a negative? So, so that's a great question. What happens if we have a negative on the exponent? So like, let's, well, yeah, let's look at an easier one. Let me give you an easier one, right? So let's say an easier one, three, let me give you an easier example, to the negative two power. Does negative power mean it's gonna to change to a negative? No. no, right? What does it do? it moves it to the bottom. So we'd have one over three to the second power. So essentially, what is, what is it doing? It was started at three, and then it moved to one ninth, right? Mm -hmm. so squaring. Got a, yeah, squaring it and moving to the bottom. But what happened overall to it? It got a lot smaller, right? The bigger the power, the smaller it'll get. Let's, so let's say three to the negative four. Uh, 81, right? So it's going to be it's going to be a tiny number, right? This guy here is going to be one over e to this, which is darn near zero. Still positive, still positive, but it's going to be darn near zero. So it's kind of like zero plus a positive number. What would you get? Positive, positive infinity. Yep. Positive infinity. Wouldn't it be negative though? Because you still have to subtract the whatever is in two times infinity from. It became positive. But the two is a negative itself, isn't it? So you'd multiply these two guys, right? You'd multiply these two to make a positive number? Mm -hmm. What about the subtraction in front of it? It goes with a negative two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wait, okay. So that's just, that's just your example, so it's not actually an equation, right? Which part? The yeah, this is, yeah. It's just this, this, yeah, I, I don't like writing this like this because infinity is not a number, but I just to kind of get your guys, yeah, head up here, yeah. Yeah, this, like I said, this is, it's, I just wanted to get you guys thinking that in your head. So the next time you do this problem, think of this stuff in your head so you don't have to write it down, okay? Okay, so before we get to the practice, I want to give you two problems. Two, maybe three problems, let's see. Okay, so we'll call this one E. So same thing, you're going to give me the horizontal asymptote, and you're going to give me um, solve the limit. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity for this guy. And then 
And the next one is the limit as x approaches infinity for cosine of 1 over x. And then the last one is the limit as x approaches infinity for 2 minus 5e to the negative x. Okay. So for each of these guys, I want you to give me the horizontal asymptote. Where is it? Or does it exist? Is there one? And I want you to give me what the limit, so the actual answer to the question. We'll go over these, but I want to give you some time to kind of mess with these. All right, so let me take a look at note. I posted the, I put the answer up to E and F, but let's talk about Y. Okay, so limit as X approaches negative infinity. So for this guy here, let me erase the answer real quick so I can work on this one. Um, so the top, again, the top is... So we're looking for the big the guys with the powers, right? So it's x to the fourth, but it's the square root of x to the fourth. Well, what is the square root of x to the fourth? x squared, right? x, x2 or x squared. So it's really x squared over x to the third. That's really what it is. And that's bottom heavy, right? So bottom heavy, we get a limit of zero and we get the horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Okay. The next guy, I put the next guy on here on purpose because we haven't had a trig one yet. Okay, trig ones, we do a little differently. Trig ones, we do a little differently. We don't, we're not looking for top heavy, bottom heavy, or equally distributed. What we're looking for here, here is cosine, goes back and forth, right? It, it's a wave, right? So it comes back and forth, back and forth. So what I'm thinking for this one is, okay, if I were to plug a really big number in here, it would be cosine, because that's, that's what you're doing, right? You're plugging in a really big number in there. What is one over the biggest number possible and then some? Super small, pretty much what? Zero. Pretty much zero. So if you the biggest number you can think of and then some. If I was to plug that number into the bottom, it would really be cosine of zero, right? That's really what it would be because it's so close to zero, right? That it's like, let me see, let me show you. So the limit would be, yeah, so yeah, I'm not done yet. Watch, I'll come back to it, but I want to show you. So cosine, I know you're not supposed to use calculators, but still. Um, one divided by the biggest number you can think of. I mean, yeah, you, you could keep plugging in, all right? It just stops, right? And it just says, all right, all right, I get it. The answer is just one. Because the cosine of zero, according to your charts, is one. So this guy would be one, which means the horizontal asymptote would also be at one. But if you feel like the smallest number has an affinity cross positive number, then wouldn't that just be one, so one over one equals one? Is that like another way to get the answer? Say it again. Is there another way to get the answer, like think the smallest number of positive affinity, which is one, so one, one over one just equal one? Not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure if that would work. Yeah, I gotta think about that one. Yeah, so cosine, cosine, signs, all of those things we do a little differently. We don't think of, you know, we just kind of use mental math. And then the last guy here, I had to put the answer to the last guy because I wanted to do this one. I'm gonna rewrite this one. I'm gonna rewrite it now that I know what we do with Negative exponents, right? Negative exponents, we move to the bottom. So this guy is going to move to the bottom. So really, this is 2 
minus five over e to the x. That's really what it is, right? Because if you have a negative exponent, you move it to the bottom, it becomes positive. The exponent becomes positive. So before I do anything, before I do my um, bottom heavy, top heavy, equally distributed, I need to combine those two. So I'm going to have a e to the x here, e to the x here. So when you combine those, you're going to get e to the x as the common denominator, or 1e to the x. And then you're going to have a 2e to the x minus 5. Oops, and then it's infinity. So my next step is, where are the two big dogs? Right here and right here, right? They are, in fact, equally distributed because e to the x grows the same as e to the x, right? So if it's equally distributed, we use the coefficients. So what would the coefficients be? 2 over 1, two over one which is 2. Horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Is that about that? Okay. All right. So the rest of the time today and tomorrow, I want you to work on your practice. I posted the answer key on Google Classroom as well. Okay. So use it to check your answers. Use it to try not to. I know sometimes when you're, you know, struggling or something, 